Hey folks, welcome back to our video tutorials. In this tutorial we're going to look at shared components and specifically we're going to start with the footer. Now if you've been through the prep, set and go, you've probably already been through this part here. It's one of the first things we address when updating our site. But let's just jump into our Dreamweaver here and we're going to open up the library folder and the shared folder and we're going to start with the footer.lbi page. Now as we go back to our demo site here and we scroll on down, the footer is pretty you know, self-explanatory. It's the information located at the bottom of the page. It could be different depending on which template you're working with. There may be multiple footers, but we'll just go run through the gist of updating this because really it's just, basically it's just a web page. It's a simple web page that's being loaded in through the Dreamweaver assets as an include into the bottom of all your pages. So we'll treat it just like it's a regular web page, right? We'll go into the design mode and we'll start here with our quick links. And this is where it's a good idea to have a preview of your page open. And as an example, I have my index page open in a browser. I can see that there's the quick links and there's the uh, home page about our staff, contact us, all that information over here on the left. But when I look at the footer LBI page in Dreamweaver, it's it's stacked sort of top to bottom as opposed to left and right. And we did that for a, re a reason. We unstyled the page to make it actually easier to edit. Right? So instead of having a lot of graphics and, and things you have to contend with um, when you try and work in the design mode, we've removed that. So you just have to deal with text and pictures and that's it. For example, the quick links. If you want to change that, you just select it, a uh, new heading, and that's all you do. To change the home page about our staff, that's, those are just regular hyperlinks in a bullet list. So what you would do is, um, let's turn on our properties panel here, is you would select the text. I'd probably leave the home page, but uh, we'll just new, I'm just going to do a control Z because that didn't quite work. I'm going to select my home page, new page, type a new link for it, select it, use your, your point to file tool like you would with any hyperlink, and link to a new page. That's it. And this is just a regular bullet list, so update it like it's just a regular bullet list and then hyperlink the text in the list to whatever pages in your site you want them linked to. With the let, Let's Get Social, right, same thing, there's just some text here and then you have your icons, I'll show you how to update these. And then down below we have the heading, we have a paragraph text and just a bullet list with some address information. Right, so whatever you see presented in here, just a matter of it, it's just standard HTML that you would update just like it was in a regular web page. Uh, the only thing I'm going to advise you is when you have a heading, such as we have the new heading up here, or Let's Get Social, just be aware of which format it's using. In this case, it's the H or the heading 3, and that's probably going to be fairly consistent throughout all the templates. Um, but when you type something new in here, if for any reason it loses the heading, right, a new heading, something like that, you want to make sure that you reapply the heading 3 tag to the new text so that it displays correctly. In other words, it displays with the, the right font and the right color to match the other headings in the page. You're going to have something that looks a little bit off if you don't. All right? And finally we have the icons. Now this is just good old-fashioned regular icon. You select it, you change the link down here to link to whatever particular uh, your account and if you don't have an account for that particular type of icon for example if you don't have a tumblr account just click on the image go to the image tag the a tag and then press delete but it's important that you go to the you know you select it go to the image tag go to the a tag then press delete so that it removes it cleanly from the page if you want to have a different icon in here well you can do that quite easily you can just copy and paste a new icon in here and then link to it from your uh, using your um, link tool down below. Okay, so how do we do that? How do we add a new icon? Well, there's a couple of ways of doing this. Let's just move back a step. Let's say we want we want to add an additional icon. I'm going to show you a little cheating method that I use. I copy my a tag, edit, copy, put my cursor beside it, edit, paste. So now I've got a duplicate. But the, the reason I did that is because now I can double click on the duplicate to open up the select image source shortcut window. And I can actually cheat. I can go into the, uh, typically you'll start off in the, just the, in the website area here. I'm going to make this a little way bigger. Um, and then you can go into your site folder. You can go into your icons folder and the images folder. And in here we have a whole bunch of icons we've provided. 
I think there's a total of 160, so a total of like 53 different social networks you can select from, right? And if, uh, let's say, for example, we want to add YouTube, you would select the YouTube icon and just hit the OK button. Now, if you're not sure what size, you can experiment, but you can try and eyeball it a little bit here. Um, we have a, a, a large, a medium, and a small, right? So select the large, hit OK. If it works, perfect. If not, just do a Control Z on your keyboard and then go and find the, uh, you know, the medium version and try that out. Oops, that one's too small, right? So we just go and replace the icon like so. And then all we have to do is go down to our link and enter the link to our YouTube video or, or, or our your YouTube page right here. And uh, that's really all we have to do, right? Now, I know a lot of folks are not going to have a Facebook and a Twitter and a LinkedIn, at least not right away. But as your site grows, you may find that you need to add those. And this is a quick and easy way to add them to the bottom of your page there. And the only other thing I really need to address is the, uh, the email link down here. You see this you at your webmail, right? When you are updating an email link, and I'm going to give you a little bit of a warner, I probably wouldn't keep an email link in my own website. But it is there because a lot of people do want to do this. Uh, but it can attract spam because there's, there's phishing filters and all sorts of things on the web today that will crawl through a website looking for the mail to, which is uh, d dedicated to working with email addresses. It looks for that particular bit of information, then it farms or fishes the email addresses out of the page. So you may find your spam increasing if you do use it. But like I said, it's in there if you want, because a lot of folks want to know how to add their email address to um, their web page. So it's there, but if you don't want to use it, just simply, you know, click, find the A, the LI tag, hit the delete button, and it's gone.